Absolutely. Mm. God's wanting to open portal, power <clears throat> portals here on earth, and he's wanting to open them all over the world. No matter where you're from, no matter what your past has looked like, no matter what you're experiencing, God wants to open power portals and show his glory in a powerful way. Okay, so look, so people are going to hear the word portals, and they're going right. to go, oh my gosh, another charismatic crazy thing. People are talking <laughs> about portals. I mean, are portals in the Bible? They are everywhere in the Bible. Okay. And we normally hear them, <clears throat> uh, you know, we look at words like door or gateway and window and we don't really think much about it but that's what a portal is a portal is an entry point it's a doorway it's a gateway and you know even in Malachi it speaks about God opening up the windows mm. of heaven and pouring out such a blessing that wow. we couldn't contain now people just read over that and they're like oh that's nice a little window of heaven opening no this is like so powerful wow. this is amazing this is a power portal opening with unlimited resource and overflowing blessing available for us wow and so you know the bible is full of portals and we need to discover them we need to see them in the word find them in the word and then realize that god wants to give those portals to us today in All our right. lives and as you're going to see as we listen to joshua unpack this revelation it's like these portals these doors these windows these gates in heaven can lead to us operating in the gifts can cause us to not be involved in spiritual warfare can cause us even to have power over our eating and all of that joshua okay so Th these are in the Bible, in the right. Bible for sure. Right. What what are these portals? You know, can you give us some examples of a power portal? And is Jesus? Yeah. What does Jesus have to do with these portals? Okay, well, I'm glad you asked me, Katie. <clears throat> okay, because you know people hear that word portal and they're like, "What is this?" <clears throat> no, Jesus is the portal. Mm -hmm. He is the portal. In John chapter 10 verse 9, Jesus declared himself. He said, "I am the door." Mm -hmm. He was saying, "I am the power portal for you." Wow. And then he went on and began to explain, "Nobody else, no, nobody can come to the Father except through Him." He is the only way to the Father. He is the only way to heaven. He is our power portal into heavenly glory. Wow. And He lives in us. He lives inside <clears throat> of us. So that means it's a doorway to heaven. Right. And a doorway to access all the supernatural. Actually Absolutely. Actually living in us all the time. Exactly. Walking around with us. Exactly. Wow. And when we begin to experience the manifestation of these power portals, right. that's when we step into the reality of what we've received spiritually. Mm. And when we step into that, that's where we begin to see miracles, signs signs and wonders. Um, like you already mentioned, you know, financial provision comes, mm -hmm. wisdom comes, all these things begin to come to us and we're able to engage with the supernatural. You know, every time I'm around you, I, we operate in the supernatural. Right. We see miracles that are crazy, metal disappearing <laughs> from people's bodies. <laughs> it's I awesome. mean, it's awesome, right? But every time I come around you, I learn so much. I played a video for you and you helped me unpack how a power portal mm -hmm. helped that miracle be administrated. So look, we're going to show you a selfie uh, miracle video testimony right now of a woman who witnessed firsthand metal disappearing from her friend's foot and, and ankle while they were both in prison when we came in to minister in prison. So we're going to play that uh, testimony for you right now. And then Joshua is going to kind of show us, he is going to show us how that miracle was orchestrated and, the res and it was the result of a power portal being opened in that prison. Let's take a look at it right now. Hi everybody, my name is Rose Widener. I was just really recently re released from Topeka Correctional Facility and I've got some miraculous things I'd like to tell you about. While I was there, Katie Susan, her team came up and she did, did some prayer with dunamis power and uh, and a friend of mine, she, she had screws and bolts in her foot from a severe car wreck. Uh, I know this girl really well, so it was absolutely amazing to see this happen. Well, anyway, there, we. Everybody prayed over her, and, and we confessed in his power, and and she went up to the stage, and I went up because I didn't believe it, and I grabbed her foot, and I pushed, and I pushed, and I pushed, and I rolled her heel around. There was absolutely no metal, and beforehand, you could see where the metal was starting to come out through the skin uh, and the scar tissue and everything, but it was gone. I mean, the metal was not there. It was absolutely amazing. Also, while I was there, and we had prayer, uh, I was diagnosed with diabetes 19 years ago, fibromyalgia, and I had neuropathy in my feet to the point where my feet would swell up and my toes would pop out of socket. I could hardly walk. I also had hepatitis C. While there, mind you, not on any medication, just prayer and faith and, and the power of Jesus' blood, I was healed of all of that. I was running marathons. 
my uh, A1C was perfect. No, no scarring to my kidney or liver. Complete, complete. I mean, 100% healthy. No, no damage whatsoever. The doctor actually said he could not believe how healthy all my tests came back. It's real and it's happening. Thank you, God. I remember that meeting. It was so awesome. Like a line of people got healed. But, you know, before uh, Joshua helps us unpack what happened in that miracle, I want you to invite you to send in your selfie miracle testimony. Look, if you've had a miracle happen in one of my meetings or as you watched one of the broadcasts or while you were listening to one of our resources, get out your phone, put it in the landscape position, okay, and videotape your testimony. Try to make it under two minutes. Tell us what happened to you before, how you got in the condition that you were in, and any doctor's uh, diagnosis that were given to you, any medication you had to take, and what happened the day of the miracle and how God freed you. And then send it to selfie at katiesouza.com. Now we're working out a better system. Soon our new website will be up and running. You'll be able to go right to the website after you videotape your, your miracle and just upload it right into our website. So we'll announce when that happens. If you have trouble uh, doing it right now before we get the website going, do your video, hold on to the video, and then when the website's ready, you can upload it. Joshua, that miracle, you know. It's amazing. I know. <laughs> metal disappearing from her foot. Yeah. And it wasn't just Rose that came around and was touching her foot. Right. I gathered all her friends. I said, who here has touched her foot before the miracle? And like three girls raised yeah. their hand. And I called them all down. And I said, so you felt it before? And they said, yeah, we felt the screw in there. And I said, now I want you to feel it. And they all pushed. I said, it's, it's amazing. It's gone. All right. So explain to us how that was a power portal right. that helped us administrate those miracles. Yeah. So power portals open wherever <clears throat> people of faith are gathered. Right. And when people put a demand on the things of the Spirit, that's where the power portal opens. Yeah. And when the power portal opens, I mean, there's miracles available, there's healing available, all those wonderful things are available. So when this miracle <clears throat> was happening, I mean, it was people of faith pressing in, but then when the miracle happened, even, uh, you know, Rose coming around and beginning to testify about, mm. I don't feel this, it's amazing, it's gone. All the, those little testimonies further expand the portal, right? It opens it up wider? Ex it opens it up wider. Wow. And okay. not only that does it open up wider, but it invites other people to come into some of the same. And so maybe other people don't necessarily need metal removed from their body, but if there's a different kind of healing miracle that they need or some other kind of thing mm. that they need from the Lord, mm -hmm. those testimonies open up a portal for mi more miracles to happen. Yeah. And then you shared with me that after that happened, the Lord began downloading to you like wisdom. Oh, and yeah words of knowledge Big. were coming and all these kinds of yeah. things. And we see that happening in Genesis 28. Right. It speaks about a portal opening <clears throat> for Jacob, remember? Yeah. The angels are coming down and going up the stairway. I mean, it's it's amazing. Right. And as this portal is opened, he sees the Lord standing over top of the ladder and God is speaking blessing to him. He's speaking about his inheritance. He's speaking about future blessing that's coming to his life. And Jacob's like in this portal encounter receiving all of this from the Lord. But these are the things that we should expect. Wow. When portals begin to open, we should begin to hear things from the Lord that we've not heard before. <clears throat> yeah. We should begin to see things we've not seen before. Yeah. We should ex begin to experience miracles, signs, and wonders. All of these kinds of things happen when the portals are open. Yeah, and you're, you're exactly right, because then like another 63 women got healed. They right. came up to testify. Yeah. And then after that, I started receiving the wisdom and knowledge that you're talking about. Right. I got a word of knowledge about uh, monkey bars. I said, <laughs> people here have been Injured as a child on monkey bars. Three women were there. It's amazing. In the prison. It's and amazing. they were crippled on, you know, with canes and, and wow. pain in their backs and their and their legs and, and they came up and all three of them got healed. Right. All three of them got right. healed because that portal opened up. And like you said, it got right. wider yeah. the more people testified. Yeah, it does. See, this is something that we need to know about. You may think power portals, that sounds so, you know, charismatic. That sounds so weird. But it's actually, as you said, in the Bible, and it can help us learn how to operate in the supernatural. Joshua, you talk in your book. I love this book, Power Portals. Thank you. I'm going to be getting the audio version, yes. which I encourage you all to keep your eye out for the audio version that's coming out because then Joshua's reading 
reading the book. And not only will you get the information, but the anointing that's on you yeah. will be passed to the people as you're reading this over yes. them. Amen. I always tell people, get the audio and get the physical <laughs> book because you're going to want to hear me say it. Yeah. But then you're going to want the physical book because you're going to make a lot of notes. You're going to underline. Mm. You're going to highlight. Um, there was a woman that got my book several years ago, and she said, I have underlined the entire book. You know, normally you just do like a line or two. Right. So the whole thing's oh underlined. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. It's because it's full of gems. It full is. Full of gems. Activations mm. and all that kind of stuff that you're going to want to Absolutely apply to your life. Awesome. Now, in this, you talk about the three heavens. I know a lot of people ask me about that. Are there three heavens? Right. You know, where's that in the Bible? What does it look like? Right. So there's first, second, and third heaven. Yeah. Um, we hear Paul specifically speaking about the third heaven. Yeah. And he said, you know, whether in the body, out of the body, he didn't know, but there was a man that was caught up to the third heaven. He was right. talking about himself. Yeah. And so the third heaven is the domain of God. It's the abode of God. It's the place where God resides. We <clears> would <throat> call it the glory realm, right? Yeah. That glory realm atmosphere. Mm -hmm. um, but the first heaven is the realm where we live. It's the the sky that's above the earth. This is the first heaven okay. atmosphere. Mm -hmm. Now between first heaven and third heaven is the demonic realm where there's warfare, it's angels and mm. demons, there's the clash, there's fighting, there's, I mean, it's very dark. And if you get stuck in that realm, it can become very heavy, Whoa. depressing, um, constant warfare. Mm. You'll always feel like you're under a, in a battle, under a, a cloud of darkness, you know. But the thing about portals, this is the revelation that God's given us, because Jesus is our portal into heavenly glory. Mm. When a power, and he lives in us. And yes. he lives in us. When the power portal opens up, it connects first heaven to the third heaven and bypasses the second heaven. Okay, wow. So right now, lots of people are watching and they're having endless warfare. Right. Like it, they never seem to get out of it. It right. just happens one attack after the other. And you're saying a lot of this can be bypassed. When it we can. learn about the fact that Jesus is the door right. and he lives in us right. and we can access the heavens right. through him living in us. Absolutely. Okay. Can, he's our portal into heavenly glory. Wow. He's not our <clears throat> portal into second heaven warfare. Wow. The Bible says the battle belongs to the Lord and mm. that way, the blessing belongs to the children of God. Yeah, and the battle says that Jesus came to destroy the works of the enemy. Right. So he would never lead you into the second <laughs> heaven where the battle is. Right. Because he came to destroy that work. Right. How do you access, I mean, we all know Jesus lives in mm -hmm. us if we're born again, and that he's the door right. that can lead. Now, what you're saying, lead us right. to that heavenly glory. Right. How do we access, I mean, we he's there. Is it just a matter of talking to him, meditating? What is it? So there's many different <laughs> things we can do, and I share a lot of different tips and techniques and spiritual insights in the book, Power Portals. Right. But something that I want to talk about right mm -hmm. now is that for me, the connection that I've found into accessing the third heaven through Jesus Christ is through praise and worship. <clears throat> okay. And I think if we look at Psalm 100, it says we enter into his gates with thanksgiving, mm. into his courts with praise. That's good. Now the gates, that's a portal, right? Right, yeah. And so this is a golden gate. This is a, a supernatural portal that opens when we <clears throat> choose to position ourselves in praise and worship of the Lord. Yeah. Now, you can't really do that unless you've received him as Jesus, as personal Lord and Savior. Yeah, right. When you've received Jesus in your life, suddenly you want to give him glory. You want to give him praise. And when you do that, that's how you open yourself up and open up a gate where you now all of a sudden move into that third heaven reality mm -hmm. saying, this is the place that I was created to live. This wow. is the place yeah. where I'm I'm establishing my life. And you see, with power portals, God is wanting us to establish them, not just over our own personal lives, but over our homes, over our families, over our finances, over our communities. Mm. God's looking for people who will open power portals everywhere they go. Right. And so we become an open door because we, we are a door. door. Yeah. Because we're carrying Christ in us and exactly. He's the door. So we become a mobile door. Right? I call it a portable portal. <laughs> a portable? Yeah, a portable portal. <laughs> I love that. Yeah, all these P's. Uh, it's kind of like... Right, a portable yeah, portal. Yeah. Okay. Well, a portable power portal. <laughs> right. So, and you're saying that we can become portable. We can. And open up uh, yeah. these doors and gates for our family members, yeah. for our city, for our nation, yeah. um, wherever we go, like, through our praise and worship. For example, remember Peter. The Bible talks about him, and it says that... Most translations use the word shadow. They say wherever his shadow landed, oh, yeah. people received healing, right. right? If we actually investigate that and look a little bit further, it's not necessarily a shadow. It's more of an overshadowing. 
Okay. It's speaking about the overshadowing presence of God. And this is what happens when portals open up. Yeah. It's an overshadowing presence oh. of God that comes over our life. And now wherever we go, we right. carry that portal with us. So now when the sick wow. come into our atmosphere, we don't get sick, they get healed. Wow. Now when we go into the wow. at, now when we go into a place where there's been a lot of poverty and extreme famine, all of a sudden it, we don't become poor. All of a sudden others become rich wow. because we're carrying this portal of God with us wherever we go. Yes. And so when I begin to sing and praise and worship the Lord. I I like to live in that lifestyle. It's not just something I do, but it's yeah. who I've become. Right. Is that praise and worship? But you know, the Lord has always given me new songs, and I'm I'm singing the new song. And the Lord taught me many years ago. He said, wherever the new songs show up, new glory shows up. Okay. And so when we choose to sing those new songs, whether we're talented to sing, whether we're musical or not, it doesn't make the difference. Okay. If we can posture our heart in praise and worship, a huge door is open for us, and that opens up portals in the Spirit. How, what advice would you give people that when they go to worship, they're right. facing resistance, like physical resistance, they're too tired or exhausted, right. or mental resistance where their mind is full of noise and they right. can't get quiet. You know, right. what are some things that people can do to step out of that and break free of that resistance and step uh -huh. into the worship? Well, I think the first step is making the choice that you're going to do it. Okay. And just deciding you're going to do it regardless what I feel like, regardless how my how bad my day has been, how bad my week has been, no matter how I have been tormented, I am going to choose to praise the Lord. Right. My praise isn't dependent on my feelings. My praise isn't dependent upon my circumstance. Right. My praise is dependent on the promise that I have in the Word that He is everything I need. Wow, come on. And so when I recognize Him as everything, I'm going to give Him praise. And when I do that, it might start out, out a little rough. Yeah. You know, it might be a little uh, uh, rusty at, yeah. at the beginning. Feel dry. Feel dry. But yeah. when you start, if you just choose to start and just do it, then I there's think... a point where suddenly it clicks and there's a flow that comes. I think God honors our struggle. He it's does. It's like we're struggling he and does. we can't break through, but mm -hmm. he's just sitting there going, you made a choice, right. like you just said, yeah. to just praise me no matter though yeah. you felt terrible, yeah. you felt oppressed, you felt depressed, you felt right. like you couldn't do it, right. but you just said yes and pressed through, and I think yeah. God really honors that. He does. Wow, that's so good. It's a heart decision that has to be made. It is. Mm -hmm. Okay, so Joshua, you said something about you become an open earth. Is this part of becoming an open earth? What does that mean, Okay, becoming so an open earth? We talk about the open heaven, yep. and the, when heaven opens up, that's the power portal coming and expanding in our atmosphere. But, you know, sometimes people say, well, you know, heaven's just closed in my life. And I just, I wish I lived in an open heaven. I wish that heaven was open in my finances. I wish that heaven was open in my physical body. But the truth is, heaven is open. From the time that Jesus opened heaven, you know, the Bible tells us that he, he gave his life, he suffered, he died, but he rose to new life. He rose with resurrection, life, and victory. And when he did that, the veil was torn. The, the separation between man and God, uh, was the separation was annihilated and the, the way was made through Jesus Christ. So now we have access to the open heaven. But not every believer is living in an open heaven, although it's available for every believer. Right. The proof of that is most believers. They're not uh -huh. living under an open heaven. Yeah. Why? Because they aren't an open earth. Mm. The agreement, the choice has to be made to become an open earth. I have to choose, like I was saying earlier about praise and worship, yeah. I have to also choose to agree with God's word. Right. I have to choose to agree with what he said. Because there's a lot of words that are spoken over our lives every single day. Yeah. There's a lot of reports that we're given. There's a lot of things that we see. There's a lot of news that we listen to. But the thing is, whose report are you going to believe? Right. I choose to believe the report of the Lord. And when I do that, I open up as earth, I open up the earth to connect with the open heaven. Mm. And when so we, we're the doorway in earth, if we let it be opened with absolutely. our agreement of what God is saying to us. So Jesus Christ is our doorway into heavenly glory, yeah. but then we become his doorway of heavenly ah, glory into the earth. That is so yeah. good. When we choose to agree with him in every right. area, spirit, soul, and body, right. we open up ourselves and suddenly heaven now begins to pour in and flow through our lives. Right. So in simplicity for the, for the viewers right now that are right. watching, you're saying that even just the act of 
pushing away negative thoughts. Right. And instead, decreeing the word of God. Right. Over ourselves. Yeah. Just even that simple act, though it's a battle, mm -hmm. it's a daily second by second battle. It's a choice that has to be made. That's part of becoming the open earth. Exactly. Where you become a doorway for Jesus to come into this realm, uh -huh. into this earth. And, and touch and other the, people. Wow, that's really it's good. It's amazing. It is good. So there's seven different personal portals that I address in the book. Okay. The first portal is the doorway of your heart. The Bible says that Jesus stands at the door and he knocks. Right. So the question is, number one, will we let him in? I mean, that's where it all begins. Salvation right. with Jesus Christ. And that right. happens in the heart realm. Right. But then when we let him into our heart, he doesn't want to just stay in our heart. You know, Jesus doesn't want to just be locked up in your heart. He wants to flow in every area of your life. Come on. And so the next, the Bible says from the heart, the mouth begins to speak. Yeah. That's the second portal. Right. David said it like okay. this. He said, God, keep watch over the door of my lips. He was calling it a portal. Wow. He said, my the lips. The door of the my door lips. The door of my lips. Wow. My lips are a portal. Wow, they're a door. My wow. mouth is a doorway. Wow. And, you know, Proverbs tells us very clearly the power of life and death is in what? The, the tongue. tongue. What comes out of your mouth mm. actually matters. Yes, it, does. it does. Some people say, well, my words don't really matter. Actually, your words carry weight. In the spiritual realm, they do. Yeah, wow. And we have to watch over what we say. Mm. I remember uh, several years ago, Janet and I, we were talking about the testimonies of God, and I was saying, that miracle was just so incredible. And when I said it, the Holy Spirit spoke to me. He said, no, it's very credible. Oh, because and incredible thought, means. What? What do, you, what do you mean? And when I looked up the word incredible, it means not to be credible. Oh, wow. Everything that God does is absolutely credible. Now, now I'm not wow. saying that to condemn anyone. No. Because we don't, we don't say those words to try to malign the things of God. We say it because it, it's become common speech in the earth. Right. But the Lord began to show me we can actually have an uncommon vocabulary of glory in our mouth. And when wow. we do, it releases life. Yeah. And so I started looking for Bible words to describe miracles, things like awesome, wonderful, I mean, that means full of wonder. Right. You know, those words are the Bible words that are filled with life. When we talk about God's miracles like that, it's amazing how God settles and rests on that. Right. And so even like little innocent things like that, God began dealing with us about the words we were speaking. Wow. Because we want to speak words of life, not words of death. Right. And this isn't a religious thing, Katie. You know, you can take anything to an extreme yeah. and get really religious and really get works-based about it. That's not what I'm talking about. And that's not what I'm trying to impart to people people through the book. I'm not trying to give you a set of rules, right and wrong and all that. What I'm saying is we need to get connected with the Spirit. And there's a whole chapter called Synchronizing with the Spirit. Yeah. When we begin to synchronize with the Spirit and get in the rhythm of the Spirit, yeah. that's where the flow really happens. Come on. Yeah. Okay, so you said there's seven personal portals. Right. You touched on, you know. The heart. Yeah, the heart. And then the door of our mouth. The mouth, yeah. Okay, and then what else? Okay, so then the mouth connects with the next portals, which is our eyes and our ears. Okay. Our eyes and our ears go together. A lot through the Bible it says, it speaks about having eyes to see, ears to hear. Yes. The connection between the eyes and the ears. Yeah. So what are we doing with our eyes? What are we looking at? What are mm. we focused on, right? Mm -hmm. If we focus on the things of God and focus on the things of glory, it's amazing how God enables us to be built up in our inner man. Yes. There's a scripture that speaks about your eyes being filled with light as portals. Yes. When your eyes are filled with light, what happens? Your whole body is consumed by light. Yes. Your whole being is consumed. If your eyes are dim or dark, yes. then suddenly darkness comes and begins to consume you. Yes. And so we got to guard the portals of our eyes. Yes. The other thing is we got to guard the portals of our ears. Our faith is activated by what we hear. Right. The Bible says faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Yes. And so your ears are portals to hear and receive the truth of God. Mm. Now, a lot of people, Katie, they're in atmospheres where all they're hearing is negativity. Mm. They're hearing cursing. This is true. They're, they're hearing uh, about the doom and the gloom and the destruction and all the bad things that are happening in right. the world. And that's all they listen to. Mm. And then they come to our meetings, and I'm sure they come to your meetings yes, too. They do. And they say, why do miracles never happen for me? Uh, it's because miracles are activated by faith. Yeah. And faith comes by hearing the word of God. If you're hearing stuff that's anti-God, yeah. if you're hearing stuff that's anti-Christ, you can't expect miracles to show up right? because it's faith activated. Mm. And so I tell people, it's very, very simple. You just need to get in the right atmosphere of hearing God's word. Mm. Now, this doesn't mean that suddenly we, we leave earth and we're not a part of hearing any conversations or stuff. It just means make sure that the input through your ears mm -hmm. is greater 
in the faith realm yes. than, than in the negative realm. Okay. Yeah. That's important, I think. Very important. Yeah, we have to have balance. I mean, it's not like we we say, oh, you can't watch any news anymore or anything no, else exactly. like that. We need to be informed, right? But at the same time, we need to be having, having more mm -hmm. of the Word of God, of right. His presence, of praise, worship going in our ears, in our eyes. Right. You know, I do teach on the, on the eye scripture in Luke 11 where it says the eye or the conscience, uh -huh. which is our soul. Yes. You know, when it's full of light, when it will be sound and fulfilling its office <laughs> when your whole body's full of light. Yes. So it's basically saying when you go, when you let stuff in your eyes and your ears yeah. that is healthy, that is from the word, that is biblical, right. that is positive, you know, it will cause your whole body to be full of light and then you'll it be does. sound and fulfilling your office. Mm -hmm. You'll think right, you'll act right, you'll Absolutely. feel right, and you'll get a miracle. What what your eye sees and what your ear hears affects what your mind thinks. Yes. And your mind is the the next portal. Okay. You know, personal portal. Yeah. The Bible says, let this mind be in you that was also in Christ Jesus. Mm. And so God wants to give us his mind. Yes. Now, I think it was back in, uh, you know, the Israelites said, you know, his, uh, his ways are higher than our ways. His thoughts are not our thoughts. You know, that kind of thing. Yeah. But in this day, you know, that was before Jesus. Right. But in this day, we need to say, God, I want your ways to be my ways. Come on. So that your thoughts mm. are my thoughts. I love that. When your thoughts are my thoughts, then all of a sudden your ways can become my ways. Wow. And we can begin to walk strategically in the things of God. We don't have to navigate this this life uh, uh, kind of just wandering around, kind of trying to feel in the dark, wondering where we're going. God wants to give us divine blueprints, yes. divine plans. God wants to n give us his navigation strategies yes. and he wants to put them in our mind. He lays out our paths before us. Absolutely. Right. Yeah. Okay, so are, there, are those all of the personal portals in us? Is so there then, more? So there's a few more. So from the mind, it goes down into our innermost being. Okay. okay. Is the, that the soul realm or where, what is that? It is. So this is, I, I call the innermost being the seat of the soul. Okay. Whereas the heart is a seat of the spirit. Okay. Okay. Now there is a lot of overlap in the spiritual dimension. Sure. And actually when I talk about our innermost being, this is like our spiritual core between the heart and our innermost being. This is our spiritual core. Okay. And this is where we're built up in God. Okay. So it starts in the heart, but then also from our innermost being will flow rivers of living water, wow. right? Now, and that's, that's a gateway of, of, it's of a huge supernatural gateway, power. A huge gateway. And we we feel a lot. The People sometimes say, well, my gut feeling is, well, you know, people put natural things to it, but the truth is when we're filled with the Holy Spirit, it's not just a gut feeling, it's discernment that's coming from our innermost being. Okay, come on. And people feel it deep within them, right? These yes. Holy Spirit feelings deep within. Yeah. And so God wants to open up that portal so that it will flow with heavenly blessings, so that wow. the, the heavens will flow from us in that way. Now, once our innermost being is active and flowing in the Holy Ghost, suddenly the power of God is triggered in our life so that power can flow out from us yeah. and that happens through the portals of our hands so is it like okay it comes into our eyes and ears as we yeah. read and meditate on the word and we uh -huh. receive worship and we yeah and and when as we're seeing out the worship it uh -huh. hits our brain and then it flows into our, our innermost the seat being. of our innermost being yeah. and that's what empowers that river to flow out yeah. of us but we have to give god permission to flow out from us okay and there's sometimes you know you go deep in prayer and you can feel it right there yeah but then you got to let it out so then once again it comes up through your mouth and you can see how the portals ah. begin interacting with each other yeah right but when it when it begins to flow when the power begins to flow the bible says that you will lay hands on the sick yes. and they will recover yeah. the bible says that whatever your hand touch that God will bless the works of your hands. Why? Because your hands are the portals where heavenly power flows out from you. Right. Now you see miracles all the time. Right. Can you tell us a couple of miracles that you've experienced? Because oh. I've been in your meetings and they're crazy. They're wild. People are getting healed left and right. It's wonderful. Yeah. Share with us some testimonies. I could tell you more than a couple. Yeah. But what yeah, I will please. say is that God's done a lot of very unusual 
uh, extraordinary signs and wonders through our lives. Yeah. And one place where the unusual signs and wonders come is in our hands. Yes. I'll oftentimes get supernatural oil yeah. bubbling up from the palms of my hands. It looks like it's almost coming in the creases at first, and then it begins to bubble up and flow. I mean, not just a little tiny oil. I'm talking about flowing oil from my hands. Okay, so now everybody's sitting here <laughs> watching. They're going, what? That's impossible. Well, right. you know, the Bible talks about the gifts of the Spirit and how we're anointed with the oil of the Holy Spirit. Spirit. And honestly, right. I know many people, personally know many people that I can yeah. even pick up my phone right now and call yeah. that were there when those things happened. I've seen it personally myself. Yep. Um, there's a man that we know that picked you up at a hotel once and you <laughs> yes. were standing out front to go to a meeting yes. and oil was coming uh -huh. off your hands so much. Were you? I think they, went and, to, got, they went and got cups they for They went me. and got a cups uh -huh. for you and it was filling up the cups. Yep. It probably filled about a quarter of the cup. And then we went out into the meeting. And when we got out into the meeting, the oil continued to flow from my hands. It dripped all over my feet. And then the oil was coming out of my feet. So I had to take my feet out of the shoes. And I stepped on like this cloth, you know, that, that they use in altar ministry. Yeah. And when I stepped on it, the oil continued to flow into the cloth. And we ended up using that as a point of contact for miracles in that meeting. And there was, I mean, there was things I mean, like how do you explain? cancers yeah, right. disappeared, right. I mean, all kinds of diseases. There's a woman who couldn't have a child and we, we got a testimony uh, about a year later that she was now holding her little baby that the doctor said was impossible. Yeah. Uh, these are the kinds of things that happen when you're in that atmosphere. Yeah, see, now now that we've opened up this can, right. you know, because um, <laughs> we're going to have viewers that are going to write in and say, you know, right. you guys are charismatically crazy, you've lost it, this isn't in the Bible and all that. You know, we don't you know, uh, even in the book of John, it says that if we yeah. wrote down in the books mm -hmm. uh, all that Jesus did, the books would not fit in the world. Yeah, there wouldn't be enough libraries to contain the books that would have to be written. Yes, right. And it tells us at the end of John 20, it says, Jesus did many more signs in the presence of his disciples than what are written in this book. Right. Because people always say to me, well, where is that in the Bible? Well, we know that there's holy anointing oil. We see that yes. in the Bible, the oil of peace, the oil of joy, oil of healing. So that's all there. Yeah. But we don't see it coming out of people's hands. But there's a lot of things that Jesus did that we don't read, we can't read about. And it doesn't mean it wasn't Jesus. It was Jesus that did mm -hmm. it. And when he's living inside of us, we should expect that there's extraordinary, unusual miracles that will happen. And now when God does these miracles, they don't contradict his word. He'll never contradict himself. Yeah. And so that's how we can know whether something's from God or not. Does it bring us to the person and presence of Jesus? Is it leading us to Him? Yeah. Well, uh, that's what I hear you preach about when I see you have when right. I see these miracles manifesting right. in in your meetings. And you know, and Jesus Himself told His disciples, "I, I really have more to tell you now, yeah. but you right. can't handle it right, right now. But when the Spirit comes, He will explain right. all things to you. He it's will true. explain truth to you. So you know, as we have to realize that God is supernatural. He is, and and He wants us to operate." As as he has created us. Yeah. I mean, I myself have seen some things happen in your <laughs> meetings that I know were real and that right. were beyond explanation. Astonishing. Astonishing. Yeah. Like the time when a large gold nugget appeared right. in the right. palm of your hand in front right. of us all and we right. saw it. We right. saw it with our own eyes. We were all there and yeah. we were behind the scenes. People were touching. Mm -hmm. You know, it wasn't just like an audience thing. Right. We had access to you. Patricia right. had access to you and everything else. Yeah. This is power portals. Yeah. Our hands are the place where the power is released. Right. And that's why the Bible tells us, even with the impartation, you know, don't lay hands quickly on people. Don't don't just go around because this is powerful. This is powerful what's coming holy. out of our hands. It's holy, it's precious, it's sacred what God wants to yeah. do. And so be led by the Spirit when you're releasing impartations, when you're laying hands on people. Mm. And then the the final seventh portal is the portal of our feet. Mm. Our feet are portals no. of possession. Because we're walking on the earth, claiming uh -huh. the earth. No wonder the oil was coming out of your feet. Joshua 1, yeah. 3. Right. I will give you every place that your feet will tread. Right. So when we're walking around, Katie, like when I go to the store, when I go to the supermarket, when I'm out there on the streets, walking the streets, I'm not just going someplace. I have the knowledge now to know my feet are portals and I can prayer walk, spiritually walk this territory, taking it for the Lord. So if there's been crimes in an area or if there's been you know, a poverty in an area or if there's been a sickness or illness in an area, I'm walking that and I'm thanking the Lord that He's given me that place and that the atmosphere is shifting because as His ambassador from yes. heaven to earth, 
I'm now allowing, as an open earth, allowing the open heavens to come mm. and do what he You're does best. You're the door to this earth. Right. This is so good. Look, our guest today is Joshua Mills. You know, get on our Facebook page, share this broadcast. It's stuff that even is beyond our comprehension. Yet God is doing these types of signs and wonders in the earth for people who are willing to become a door for him in this place, in this earthly realm to receive and release the power of Jesus into every situation we face. 